Well, hello, everybody. This is Byron King with Investor Intel. Today, we're going to speak with a man named Mark Varney uh, with a company called uh, Wedgemont Resources, and they are in the old-fashioned oil business in Texas where they drill wells and uh, they produce oil. It's not artificial intelligence. It's not super high tech, although much of the energy business is that as well today. But uh, but we're talking about good old fashioned oil, oil and gas coming out of the ground. Uh, hello, Mark. Uh, you have a you have a company that's new to many people in the market. Many of our viewers probably don't know much about you. Tell us about Wedgemont. What is, what is this company that you put together? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Byron. Wedgemont's a uh, newly listed company just in 2021 and we are a brand new entrance into the permian basin in particular the eastern shelf of the permian basin in central texas uh, we announced our first asset acquisition on december 31st of 2022 and we are now working on our first acquisition uh, just south of the town of abilene texas we anticipating adding more assets to the portfolio in our immediate core area over the coming over the coming months. And some people have asked us, uh, as a Canadian listed company, why Central Texas? I, I think it's I think it's pretty important. Obviously, it's one of the most prolific hydrocarbon basins in the world. Um, and we had the opportunity when we first looked at the area to partner with an established turnkey operator with a forty year track record in Central Texas that brings us. The relationships with the with the with the local industry with the local landowners to really give us uh, we feel an advantage over some people as far as doing deals and getting work done in this part of Texas. So um, that's an absolute key for us. There's a multitude of financially strapped operators in Central Texas here because of the downturn from 2014 to 2020. I think everyone should be familiar with that. Obviously, oil prices before even COVID from from the fall of 2014 through 2020, it was some pretty tough times. So there's a lot of distressed owners who are keen to sell. Well, that, that brings up an interesting point there. So, so here you are. You're in you're in Texas, which knows a few things about the oil business. They've been doing it for 140 years, and uh, and so uh, you just mentioned distressed assets. Key uh, people are looking to sell. I think what a lot of people think of the Texas oil industry today, they think of you know the booming Permian Basin, uh, which is what's going. But you're not you're not there exactly. You're over to the east of that in a more traditional area of vertical wells. This isn't all fracked up like a pin cushion or whatever. So what is it that you're doing with in, in this area? What are you bringing to the table uh, to the owner operators out there? Why would they wanna work with you? Yeah, Byron, you hit the nail on the head there. So as most people know, the large shale operators kind of in the center of the Midland Basin from kind of Midland, Texas, west of the New Mexico side. And those large operators, everyone from Exxon Mobil to Chevron to Pioneer Natural Resources have literally sucked all the resources, including people, equipment, capital, technical expertise out of the conventional central Texas oil industry, which really has been the backbone of the industry there for 70 or 80 years. So everyone is focused on that area. And obviously these larger companies in order to grow and to move the needle need these large shale targets over, over thousands of acres to you know to grow production for the rest of us and smaller operators mid-size operators central texas has literally been abandoned and we're able to go in there because of our partner we have the full turnkey operations side with all the services we need with the relationships with the landowners and go to the areas that have been ignored you should really think about it a lot of these areas are like People bought a car 17 years ago and they've done nothing to it. The, a lot of the, the, the conventional vertical wells that we're looking at were drilled 10 to 20 years ago. No work has been done on them. And we are able to go in, uh, do chemical workovers, sorry, chemical treatments and workovers, new zone perfs that nobody has touched for a long period of time. So we see a huge amount of opportunity Really, because they've been under-optimized, underdeveloped, and undercapitalized. Well, so that's interesting. Now, these are old vertical wells. We're not talking about these directional wells like you hear about in the fracking country. Uh, like I said, they're drilled with these old uh, rotary bits. That, uh, and for, you know, full disclosure, my first job 
as a geologist was in the Permian Basin west of where you are, but out in the Midland Odessa area. But uh, this was this was one of the drill bits from one of my first oil discoveries here. But uh, but so you're out there uh, picking up these older wells that need the work, and then you bring capital and you bring the new expertise that maybe the existing operator cannot afford or just has not been able to, you know, muster the the the, the team that they need to to do the work. Is that is that the is that the business plan? You're exactly right. And so people ask me, like, well, you know, why are these people selling? What's going on down there? Why is the opportunity so good? But again, a lot of the owners here are distressed. And a lot of them, for example, are family owned businesses. And we got offered a deal the other day where the the fellow who ran the business, uh, he wanted to retire. His kids didn't want to get in the business. And, and that person's looking for an exit. And because our partner, Petrosaurus, has these local relationships, they're the first call. So you know, that's why, you know, that's that's kind of the strategy, what we're doing here. So acquire distressed asset, consolidate the adjacent properties, enhance and optimize the existing wells. So to give you an example, in Reynolds County, there's only a handful of horizontal wells out of the thousands that have been drilled throughout, throughout the history of the industry here. And um, so what our partner is able to do and what we're able to do is go into these mature fields, right? for example, our Will Bend field number one, we go in, we do chemical treatments of the wells and formations, we do workovers, and then we'll do new zone perfs. And so far, the results that we've been getting have just been outstanding. We're really excited about the, about the upside potential. So think about it very basically. We can go in and for a very low purchase price and a very inexpensive chemical treatment, we can get all our capital back in a very short period of time. And all the growth on the other side of that will be funded by cash flow. It's 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 truly uh, an excellent opportunity. So in a sense, what you're doing is you're going around to the smaller operators, operations, and you're doing kind of a roll up of these old wells. You're Then you apply capital to them, modern technology, modern treatments, and you're going to be able to ramp up the uh, output because after all it's all about producing and selling barrels right uh, exactly is, is that the business plan going forward that, that is it, it's really a rinse and repeat rinse and repeat process right so what we wanted to do on our willow bend asset which was a small asset to start is show the market to show people that we know what we're doing that we're able to grow the production and not just grow production but grow production on a really economic basis for extremely, you know, we're able to add flowing barrels. Our goal, we stated in our initial PowerPoint that we could do it at sub $5,000 per flowing barrel. And so far we're ahead of that. So exactly rinse and repeat, Byron. There's a ton of opportunity here, but we really wanted to prove it on asset number one. Now we're in a position to go after the, uh, the further assets in our area and really consolidate it and get a core area where we can grow. So that's an interesting number. So for five thousand dollars per barrel of increase, and then you figure, look, you know, pick a number. Let's just say, let's say fifty dollars a barrel. Let's use a really super conservative number for right now. So in a hundred days, uh, you 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 basically get your money back. A hundred days times fifty dollars a barrel, uh, you'll get your five thousand dollars back. Yeah, and what we're actually modeling, it's it's actually even better than that. But I'm I'm happy to go. I'm happy to be conservative and for us to uh, under promise and over deliver on that. And I think people will see, um, you know, as the news comes out with us, um, we'll we'll start to be able to talk about what we're adding production on an EV for flowing per flowing barrel. Because at the end of the day, it's all about capital efficiency. Yeah. Okay, Mark, we're going to wrap it up here uh, for the viewers out there. Uh, tell the viewers where are you listed? How would they buy your shares? Uh, and obviously, you have a you have a you have a website, but where where are you listed? And how would people buy your shares? Yeah, we're listed, uh, Byron, on the CSE in Canada ticker is Wedgie W D G Y, and we're also listed on the OTC QB ticker is W D G R F W D G R F in the U.S. Most liquidity most liquidity is in Canada, however, at this point in time. Okay, so but you're a you're a brand new operation, uh, ramping up oil production in classic old oil field country in uh, kind of kind of West Texas, sort of Central West Texas, uh, with a with a with a plan to grow production. Uh, Wedge Mount Resources, everyone, uh, take take a look at them and uh, and and see what you think.